Hi, my name is Aiden Navallo, and I have gained focus and confidence. I have improved by being a greater child on my black belt journey. The lessons I have learned are being a great person and that being a black belt is just a white belt that never quits. I also learned how to control my anger better. I do not yell at my sister as much, and I try to <laughs> release all my anger into, kicking, into the kicking shield and focus mitts. I would like to share some advice and a little motivation. Never give up on your dreams. My dad told me winners never quit and quitters never win. So if you have a dream or goal, never quit trying to reach it. Hello, my name is Nathan. I started my KMA journey when I was three years old. Team KMA has provided me with discipline and confidence. If I was able to speak to my white belt version of me, I would tell myself to focus more in class. My school teacher had to call my parents and tell them how proud she was of me. She was very happy with my focus and discipline I, I am showing. I started Krav Maga Martial Arts Tampa in September 2019. I wanted to do, play a sport because I wanted to do something active. My goal is second degree black belt here at KMMA. Reaching that goal will take dedication, focus, and integrity. Firstly, dedication, like being on time, practicing as much as I can, and being dedicated at my house as well as the dojo. Secondly, I will have to have focus, focusing on what is important, focusing on my training and technique, and focusing on things at home, like school and chores as well. Lastly, I will have to have integrity in my training because it is not even a success without honesty. I have learned that Krav is not just all about punching and kicking. Some of my favorite lessons they teach here are having self-discipline, blackout focus, and the law of the process. I started this journey when I was 10 years old, and my little brother and dad had joined me in it. And they have helped me a lot, along with the senseis and shihans. Now, everyone has their strengths and weaknesses. I know I have many, but being here has made me stronger than I was before. The first few weeks I started martial arts, I would tell myself I couldn't do it and that I should give up, but I kept going and going and it was worth it. I have gained lots of things from this experience, like allies and friends, but I'm proud of everyone who has joined me on this black belt journey. Thank you. My journey started when I asked my dad, do you trust me? I asked, when he asked why I asked that, I'm sure I said something like I was going to, wanting to hang out with friends and such. Little did I know that that question would start my whole journey with Krav. I would like to thank um, Sensei Sarah for being the first person my dad and I ever met. And she made it amazing. She's, she's a great instructor. And she always made me feel like Krav was my second home, my home away from home. And, um, People who push me past my physical limit, Shion Carolyn, but also Sensei Kyle, um, Shion Harley, Shion Diego, Sensei Winston, so many more. You all helped me um, become a better person, and I was much better in my classes for it. And you taught me so much more than I ever thought I would know in a fun and challenging way. I would like to thank. Grandmaster for founding KMMA, a place where we can learn and discover more about ourselves in a community that we trust and also practice the most practical self-defense. Uh, thank you, sir. It was early March of 20, 2018 and my daughter Abby had just recently celebrated her 10th birthday. Abby and I were walking our dog Bentley in the neighborhood like any other day or their normal chit chat. When out of the blue, Abby asked me with an unusually serious tone, Dad, do you trust me? And not sure what she was getting at, I asked her what she meant by that question. 
And she said, I'd like if I wanted to go to the movie with my friends or hang out at the mall. And I told her I wholeheartedly trusted her. It was the rest of the world that I didn't trust. That moment and those conversations were the beginning of my journey. From a training standpoint, aside from all of the useful techniques and pers of personal self-defense and weapons defense, there were two very important concepts that resonate with me. One is the law of the process. That is excellence happens daily, not in a day. If I could go back in time and talk to myself as a white belt, I think the most important message I would have for myself would be to concentrate on the curriculum in your class, at your level, and focus your time and attention on technique rather than brute force and strength. Slow down and really learn the techniques being taught at whatever belt level you are at. Yes, it is great to want to be a black belt and learn the cool techniques and the weapons defenses, to be, but to be a great black belt, you must first develop the fundamental skill sets to build upon. I remember the day Grandmaster Steve presented me with my white belt and asked me if I was ready to become a white, a white belt who never quit. And as strong as the sound that my belt made that night, that's how strong my commitment was. I had my shares of frustrations and moments of weakness where I wanted to give up. Now when the going gets rough, I just keep saying to myself, life is 10% what happens and 90% how we react to it. If I was able to go back in time and talk to the white belt version of myself, I would say to have more confidence and not, to, and not be so hard on myself and last to practice with no excuses. Did you know on the standing punching bags, the top of them are metal? <laughs> I did not know that, so I decided to, I was 100% going for it. I, you know, I wasn't holding back. 100% strength, right on top of that metal one, broke my wrist. So about three months into it, I broke my wrist practicing hammer fists at the gym. I could have stopped doing Krav Maga then, but I didn't. I just said, I'm gonna keep going with my cast, and Sensei Tom showed me ways to use my elbow instead of my hands. I never even thought about quitting. On a side note from that, um, one of the guys at work was giving me a hard time saying that women aren't tough, and he knew I did Krav Maga, but I don't think he actually believed what it was. And so I said, okay, friend. So I gathered like a group of the other guys, and I said, all right, I want you to try to put a hand on me. He was down on the ground in less than two seconds. He didn't even get a hand on me. So what we learn here really works, and everybody in the interventional radiology department at the VA hospital <laughs> thinks I'm a badass, so it's probably true. From this experience, I have gained a new sense of control, and this new self-assurance also gives me a cool swagger in my walk as well, and nobody can tell me otherwise. Since birth, I've been a kicker and a fighter, and it is extremely hard to get me to do something that I do not want to do. At the beginning of my journey, I did not want to do this, and I was exhausted, and every class I would come in and I'd be all glaring, and Sensei Sarah would say hello to me, and I'd be like, hello, Sensei Sarah, and I'd be in a good mood. So. That's it, thank you for putting up with me again. But in all honesty and to be completely serious, I want to tell anybody in this is that if you want it, you can get it, but you have to want it. I'm glad I started this journey. It taught me how to be, to, be, to defend myself physically and got me to have more regard, but yet less worry for my personal safety. I went in and I was like, okay, I just gotta get the technique down, but I didn't have the effort. I didn't put any effort into it. And that ended to me not getting one of my belts and that made me wanna quit, but I didn't. If I did, wouldn't be here right now. I was very disappointed in myself, but it brought me to learn how to get better at it. I started putting effort in, which has definitely taught me to put in my best effort and just try my best that even if I do fail something, I shouldn't give up and that I should keep going because I one time, just one time, without quitting, you're gonna pass. About three years ago, my brother started martial arts uh, at Krav Maga. I thought it was cool, I guess, but it wasn't really my thing. I finally agreed to try it out, though I thought to myself, I'll just quit after I get my white belt. Long story short, I took my first class, and at the end we did the student creed, and it was time for my sensei to bestow my first belt upon me. After he tied it, he asked me if I wanted to take that journey. I said, yes sir. In that moment, the only thing that went through my head was, I guess I can't quit anymore. After that, I never had another thought about quitting ever again. 
I think I remember that day so vividly because I remember the feeling of empowerment as soon as I, he said that, those words. I was going to do my best to make it to Black Belt. And here I am. Taking combo golf through these past years has not only taught me how to fight, but it's taught me self-discipline, it's taught me self-control, self-respect, and it's just made me a better, well-rounded, confident person. One of my favorite things about Krav Maga is when I got to go to leadership classes. I've gotten a lot of my advice and life lessons from these leadership classes. If I could give any advice to junior students, I would say that to get what you came for, whether you came for a black belt, whether you came for a workout, whether you came for a good time, no matter what it is, to get where you came here for. Because if you do, you'll feel one of the best feelings ever, the one I have right now. My first experience with martial arts was in the summer of 2015 with an after-school program that came once a week. Looking back on it, I think it laid the foundation stones for my martial arts journey, both as a student and a leader. As a white belt, I was extremely anxious for my first stress drill because I didn't know what would happen. Now, I see the stress drill as an opportunity to bring out the best in myself. When I first started, my self-confidence was low and I did not look for self-improvement opportunities. The more I trained and helped, the higher my self-confidence became and I started finding those opportunities. If I could say anything to my white belt self or any other junior student, it would be this. Never give up. Perseverance is the gateway to success. So, four years ago, I started my black belt journey. I was 10 years old and I had the strangest idea. I wanted to learn martial arts. I didn't know it then, but it was a place I'd spend the next four years learning and growing as a person. I soon got the hang of things and I learned so much more than, you know, learning how to beat someone up or how to punch someone. I learned respect, discipline, and confidence, and so many other things that just really helped me as a person. If I went back to talk to myself as a white belt or to give juniors any kind of encouragement, I would have to say, whatever happens, don't give up. Never give up. You will have days when the last thing you want to do is go to the dojo and train. Go anyway. There will be times when you just want to outright quit, go home and never go back for one reason or another. Don't do it. That's taking the easy way out. Nothing worth having is ever easy. This year for me has been definitely a tough one. I started the year in January and February thinking that my ulcers were acting up again. Oh, was I wrong. The end of March, beginning of April, I was diagnosed with COVID. They found tumors in my stomach. On January 1st, I went in, I had stomach surgery. Half of my stomach was removed. After that, I wasn't sure when or if I could train again, how long it would be. On, J on July 6th, I started my chemotherapy. I go every other week. Many of you have seen me with my little fanny pack on Tuesdays, every other week. I train with it anyway. As soon as I was able, I was back out on that mat. So there will be times when you just don't feel it, want to quit, don't feel like going or training or some other excuse you might have not to go. But when that happens, push yourself to go, give it all you've got. And even if you can't train for whatever reason, go anyway. You can still gain knowledge by observing. And when I walk in the door to KMMA, I do not feel like I'm walking into a, pe into a business that teaches martial arts. I feel like I'm walking into a second home filled with family. We all help one another, train with one another, lift one another up during hard times and trying times. And I love you all for that. So I started my martial arts journey four decades ago. At least I thought I had. While those early years laid the foundations for what I would learn later, it wasn't until I really started training at KMMA with Nathan that that journey truly began. Testing for orange belt, I tore my ACL and I was off the mat for almost nine months. If I had to sum up my journey so far, like so many of us already, it would be with one word, perseverance. It's one of the words used in our end of class student creed. It's one of the seven principles of a black belt. Simply put, it's the steady persistence or continued effort to achieve a purpose despite difficulties or obstacles. 
That single word so aptly characterizes my journey. I could have easily chosen to stop training after my knee injury. In fact, for a minute, I did. If I were to say anything to my white belt self, it'd be the same message I tell, would tell any junior student. Don't give up and don't compare yourself to anybody else. On our wall at home, next to our weapons displays, I've got a poster that reads, I choose to live by choice, not by chance, to be motivated, not manipulated, to be useful, not used, to make changes, not excuses, to excel, not compete. I choose self-esteem, not self-pity. I choose to listen to my inner voice, not the random opinions of others. I can't say it's gonna be easy, but it'll be worth it.